abundance in a universe. If we all have the ability to tap into our deepest dreams.
Bedrock bookkeepers make it on their own. Bedrock bookkeepers living in the zone. Well, I bet you didn't know you could make money from your home and take control of your security. One of the first rules when you start speaking, you should make sure that you're unmuted. Welcome everyone. Uh, welcome Bedrock team. I'm assuming we're gonna get some, some people joining late because this is actually an early start. Uh, I wanna thank everybody uh, for joining. Uh, there's some really uh, exciting things. If you're an accountant, uh, there's a lot of exciting things happening in the accounting world, specifically in the Philippine accounting accounting world. And, and I see my friend uh, Coach Yan Yan is here, and we share a similar goal, which is to disrupt the, the American accounting industry. Uh, I'm assuming most of you know me, but if you don't, uh, you know, I'm a CPA, I've been in the accounting business for over 40 years. And, and when I became an accountant, it meant something. It was, uh, we were considered the trusted advisors. And everybody that went to school for business wanted an accounting degree. Because with an accounting degree, you were guaranteed to get a job in any industry you wanted. It didn't matter if you wanted to get into sales, insurance, if you wanted to work for a bank, but that accounting degree was prestigious. And it wasn't easy, it wasn't easy. In fact, most people that try, you couldn't just get into the accounting program. You had to have a certain GPA score, uh, you had to take, you know, obviously you had to take accounting classes and, and they tried to weed out the people that just didn't cut it. And, and most people, believe it or not, in my school, where I went to school, most people wound up having to change their major. Well, fast forward to a couple of decades ago, 20 years ago, uh, things started going downhill. Okay, they made it harder to become a CPA. Okay, it was hard enough. It was hard enough to begin with. I mean, you had to, once you got out of school, you got a low paying job because you had no experience. Uh, you had to study for the CPA exam and you had to get at least two years of auditing experience not just working for a CPA, but doing certified financial reports. So one of my first jobs, we did a lot of certified audits. It was a bigger firm uh, and I hated it. I, I hated it. So I went uh, and I, you know, I kept jumping from job to job, but every time I got a job, it was with a small firm basically doing taxes. So it took me five years to get two years of auditing experience, okay? 
And I'll never forget when I got that CPA license. Well, first, when, you know, I passed three parts the first time, the last part, I got lazy. I didn't study like I did for the first three parts and I failed. I failed the fourth part, the auditing part. And, and guess what? I already said I hated auditing. So I, I didn't like studying. It wasn't interesting to me. And that was a mistake. So I took it again. I passed. And then I had to wait. I had to wait over a year to get my license because I didn't have the experience. But when I got that license, it was like, you know, because when I was 17, I decided I was going to be a CPA when I was 17. And I was I was now 27, 10 years, 10 years I worked towards that. And now I was a CPA and it meant something. OK. Two decades ago, they decided, hey, we're going to make it harder. Now, not only do you need a four year degree, we want you to go to school for an extra year. OK, so now, you know, and going to school in the United States, it's not cheap anymore. You're talking about like 30,000 a year between room and, and, board, and board for just a regular you know, not like an Ivy League school. So they made it harder. So if you're an 18 year old kid coming out of high school and you're like, oh, I have a choice. I can go to school for five years to become a CPA, work a lot of hours, especially during tax season for a low pay because they just didn't pay people with, without any experience. Or I could go to school for four years and do something that's exciting, like computer stuff or, you know, web stuff. But all of a sudden, you had people going to college and accounting wasn't the preferred major anymore. So fast forward to now. Now there is a major, major shortage of accountants and actually it's worldwide. I've come to learn it's worldwide, but I only deal with the United States, <clears throat> but it's, it's, it's all, it's been a problem because for two decades, I tried to hire accountants so I could scale my business. Okay. I'm an entrepreneur. My dream was to build a large business. And the only way to do that is to have, people under you and and for all those years i just couldn't find the right people <clears throat> so then I, I i tried outsourcing i went to every country except the philippines it was like i didn't even know the philippines had accountants here for some reason and it's not that there weren't accountants it, i think it was more like uh outsourcing to the philippine people was was sort of like a scam that that's what I've learned I know when I met John Pagalion he, that's what he said his goal was to make uh being a freelancer like being a professional like a doctor or a lawyer and I didn't understand what he was saying at that time but now I do uh, I see Janine here hi Janine I thought you were off today uh Janine was our first hire and her husband didn't believe that she could work from home. And then when she got her first check, he started believing it. So, you know, it wasn't that I wasn't looking for foreign accountants. I was. But the Philippine accountants weren't advertising. They weren't on Upworks. They weren't saying, hey, I'm, a, I'm an accountant and I want to work from home. Where did I go? I went to India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. I, I mean, if you name it, if there was an accountant out there, I tried it and it just never worked. It never worked. Be, because, and I, for a long time, I thought it was me. For a long time, I thought, because believe it or not, I'm not perfect. And I said, I've tried all these people. I must be doing something wrong. And then I met... I, I hired my friend, Larry Broughton. 
and he had a business called Hire My VA. Okay. And and he asked me, and it's almost like a joke. And I was like, Joe, we're launching our second version and we need somebody to test it. We want, we would you be willing to, you know, just go through the program and see how it works? And and what it was, his program was specifically how to hire Philippine virtual assistants. And he taught me what I was doing wrong. Okay. He had the system uh, on, you know, how you choose people, the hoops that you have to make them go through. For instance, you know, we're accountants, we're detail oriented. He can, and Marianne loves this because he came up with, you put a secret word in, in the posting. And if they don't put the secret word in the subject line, you don't hire them. You don't even look at that. And like, believe it or not, over 50% of the people didn't even bother to put the, the secret word in the subject line. So <clears throat> Janine was our first hire. She's a graphic designer though. She's not an accountant, but it worked. It worked. And I said, well, maybe we should try to find an accountant in the Philippines. So we hired an accountant and then we hired another one. And all of a sudden I started, you know, hiring people and it was working. It was working. And what I found with the Philippine community was they spoke my language, number one. You know, yeah, people in the other countries spoke English, but not my language, if you know what I mean. The words, the dialect, a lot of times it was hard to understand them. And even when you understood them, the words in America didn't mean the same thing in another country. It wasn't like that in the Philippines, okay? The thirst for knowledge. When I started hiring, I remember when I hired Luz uh, and, and Tisha, Luz remembers Tisha. It was like, they could, they were like sponges. They were like sponges, hungry to learn the US tax system. And then I hired Marianne. <laughs> she she put you know the, the secret word in the subject line. It was baseball, because that's my favorite sport. And we hired Marianne and it didn't work out. Okay. She, I think she saw that you know bedrock was serious and this was actually a career. And what she told me was she said, I don't want to call, I don't want to hold you back. I don't want to be the reason that you know, you're delayed. So, so she resigned and I said, that's fine. I respect you because you, and it, she could have just melted. It. it was like February tax season was starting. So I said, what about this, this small Facebook group? Yeah. She had 1500 people and accounting peoples. And uh, I said, I know what you, you're trying to you know, help them become freelancers. I have this course that I use to teach a lot of bookkeepers and I could tweak it to, I can update it and add, you know, how to do US taxes. So we tried it out and out of 1500 people in the group, I think four over 400 people signed up for a free webinar just to find out about doing taxes in the US. So I said, well, obviously they're interested. So we launched the course, our first 13 week course. From that course, we got more team members. We got Catherine, we got uh, Jasmine. Who else was in there? Was Eileen in there? I, I don't even remember. And then, you know, we, almost I think 60 people signed up for the paid course. And at that time it was almost $200, it was $197. So it wasn't cheap. And then we did another course and then people started asking me to learn how to use the software. So we added that. And then people wanted to learn payroll. So we added that. Now we're adding sales tax, okay? In between in the first batch, one of the students asked us 
do you have to be a U.S. citizen to become an enrolled agent? Because I was explaining, you know, I'm a, there's only three people that the IRS will talk to, an, an attorney, a CPA, or an enrolled agent. And I explained what an, what an enrolled agent is. And at the time, we had Elizabeth, who was uh, actually an attorney. She loved doing research. So she found out, she said, oh, no, you don't have to be a U.S. citizen to become an enrolled agent. In fact, there were Philippine accountants that were enrolled agents, not a lot. There was over 60 of them now. And that, that led me to say, well, then we got to teach people how to become enrolled agents. And we put it on this massive course. We, you know, my poor the team, <laughs> Luz and Catherine and Jasmine, and the rest of them, we had to come up with all of the questions. We did like a thousand practice questions. It was an intense, uh, long course. It was on the hardest part of the test, individuals, there's three parts of the test. And, and we had interest, people went through the course, but there was a problem. There was no way to take a test in the Philippines. They had, the test was here in, in Makati, but in 2016, they, they closed, they took it out. There wasn't enough demand. So when people found out, oh, you got to fly to another country, you, you know, it was an obstacle. It, it cost money. It, it just wasn't easy. We actually put together a petition to try to get it back here. So fast forward to about uh, three weeks ago, I get a message from, from Marianne. They're bringing the CPA exam to the Philippines. Three test centers. They're bringing it two in Manila and one in Cebu. So I said, you know, I was hesitant to jump into it like I do with everything. I was hesitant because I was so disappointed with the enrolled agent. Uh, opportunity and that's still that's still out there i believe that eventually the irs is going to see what what the cpa uh industry has done and they're going to put the test back in in the in manila okay that's that's my prediction uh so now it became okay so if they bring the test here what are the other hoops you have to jump through? And, and so long story short, we're going to be doing a, a, a free webinar. We're putting it together on the whole thing, how to become a U.S. CPA. And I'll tell you right now, if you have a Philippine accounting degree, you might already qualify to become to, to take the CPA exam. If your degree is, because it depends on the courses and the college, but there's a system, you go through this, uh, one of the accounting organizations and you give them your transcript and they'll tell you either everything qualifies or these qualify. And you, so if some courses don't qualify, you can make it up with, with an online course. So I, I'm watching all these pieces fall into place. And then just by coincidence, I get, uh, I meet with the student, Sapner. I know that she, she signed up for this, but I don't, I don't see her here. Uh, she's from India and I met with her and I, I had no idea. You know, I, I try to meet with all the students and I said, so, you know, where are you from and what are you doing? And she tells me she's from India, which was a surprise because we really, we advertise and market the courses to the Philippine community. She said that my name came up on Facebook and she saw what I was doing and she wanted to learn US taxes because she just became a certified public accountant 
licensed in Washington. Washington is one of the states. So she now I'm talking to an actual foreigner that just passed the CPA exam. And and I said, oh, my God, this is actually true. And then I did some research and I found an article in the Journal of Accountancy, which is the magazine for the uh, AICPA. The AICPA is like the uh, the overseer of the accounting industry in, in the United States. So in the article, the Journal of Accountancy says they announced that they were uh, putting the three test centers in the Philippines. And the underlying reason here is because they need to address the severe shortage of accountants in the US. But that's not all. A lot of those barriers, a lot of the obstacles that they added since I graduated, they're taking away. And so there's 50 different states and each state has their own roles. So part of the process is, you, so Sapner found Washington. So Washington had easier roles for her to qualify. In other words, you didn't need five years of college. You only needed 120 credits. You didn't need to work as an auditor for two years, you only needed to work for an accountant, for a CPA for 1800 hours. That's not even a full year. And there's a bunch of other states where a foreigner, specifically a Philippine accountant, can, if you have the degree and it qualifies, there's people right here, right now that probably could take the CPA exam if they want, especially people on my team that have been with me for over a year. Because I'm a CPA, they've been working with me, all they'd have to do is pass the test. Okay, so what does that, what does that mean? If you get a CPA license, the, the organization that Sapner went through to, and what they did was it was a, a company that actually coached her on how to pass the CPA exam, which you can do, but you don't have to do it. OK, I believe that you could actually study for the CPA exam without taking a course. OK, all you need are is access to the practice questions. But when I when we do the uh, the webinar, we're going to go through all of that. Uh, so where was I? I lost my train of thought now. All right. Anyway, I'm excited about it. Uh, and I'm excited about what we're doing with, with Jumpstart. Marianne, would you like to, because you're you're my partner in crime with this, would you like to say anything to, to people before we start? Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Sorry. Sorry. Uh... Yeah, so about the Jumpstart and about uh, this webinar. So, yeah, so Joe mentioned already the brief history why, how we met, what's our goal, and the recent news that we got that we can uh, create, uh, we can take U.S. exam, but more than the U.S. Uh, CPA exam is the you know, the, the goal or the visions of fulfilling the needs of the U.S. accountant. But uh, although it's not an easy road, uh, that's why we, Joe, uh, come up with this webinar from building your freelancing accounting career from scratch. So how you will get clients, uh, market yourself, and of course, sustain your uh, retention of the client. So I will not... I think Joe will discuss more about it, but he already showed me the plans and how it will be executed this coming this coming uh, weeks or few days. You will see. Yeah. So we still have planning to do it. We have the outline. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, so when when I had planned this webinar, we didn't know about the whole CPA thing. 
Uh, the reason why I wanted to launch this, this webinar was to uh, address the fact that, you know, a lot of people in Jumpstart, what I realized is there's, there are people like Mario and, and Juliet, uh, people that already have established agencies, okay? But there's also people that are still working in a brick and mortar job. They didn't even make the the uh, the jump to being a a freelancer or a remote worker. So and there is a difference. So a remote worker is like my team. Okay, they work for me. They they work full time for for Bedrock. Now they can have some clients, you know, on the side. Uh, I don't know what they're doing with, with their time, but basically that they're, they're full time, which in my the way I look at it, that's a remote worker. A freelancer is somebody like Marianne. OK, uh, somebody like Mario, they, they have uh, they have clients. But what you want to do is you want to be a freelancer working from home. OK. You could be a, so I was a freelancer for a long time, but I had to drive to all of my clients until I found out about this remote technology. And that, that was 20 years ago. And I found out oh, I can do the bookkeeping remotely. And that, that was the, the start of the end of me having to get into my car and drive to clients. It was, it was freeing. It was freeing. It reduced my cost. Okay, think about it. I didn't have to drive everywhere. I didn't have to take a train everywhere. It saved me a ton of time. Uh, and I was able to hire my mother who lived 2000 miles away and it changed her life because now she could work from home. She could make her own hours. Uh, she, she didn't have to, she could quit her, her part-time job that she had where she had to drive, you know, 20 minutes back and forth, okay? So that's when I said, you know what? That's why I put my first course together. And I said, if I could teach my mother and this really helped her, it helped me, imagine how many other people I could help. And then when I met Marianne and she had this group of people, I said, let's try it with them. And, and it's worked, it's worked. And, and all of that led to you know, the Jumpstart community where we're actually, uh, we're doing weekly webinars every Saturday. Uh, this Saturday, we have my, my friend Larry Broughton doing another workshop. Uh, you know, it's not easy to get Larry so, or somebody like Larry to come and, and do the teaching that he's been doing. Okay. And I know I've been, I've been friends with Larry for a long time and I talked to him every other week he's my coach but still every time he he teaches something i come away with something now okay in addition to that we have the jumpstart premium so everybody can come into the, the the trainings on saturday and we have the facebook group which now we're over 1500 people okay uh we have Jumpstart Premium where we actually created a step-by-step -step course going through every aspect of not only running an accounting business, but running a business, including you know, getting clients, social media, how to set up your website, you know, the, the basic, the fundamental things that every business needs, but a lot of people skip over. Okay. So I just wanted to, uh, you know, do this for the people that might think, oh, I'm not even working remotely. I don't even have a resume. I don't even have a LinkedIn profile. Well, guess what? Everybody that started, started from scratch, including me, including Juliet, including Marielle. Okay, we all started from scratch. So I just wanted to give those people that might think, oh, I don't have the experience, I'm too old. 
you know, I get that all the time. I'm too old. And I tell them my mother started when she was 62 with no experience. Okay. So if you think you're too old, well, you're right. But if you look at what other people did that were even older than you and they did it, well, just use them as an example. So sometimes it just comes down to whether you whether or not you believe you can do it. And, and I believe if somebody else did it, it can be done. It could be done. You know, I just read a story about this guy, Roger Bannister. If anybody knows who he is, I would be shocked. Okay. Roger Bannister is the first person in history that ran a mile in less than four minutes. Before him, they thought that physically a human being could not run a mile in less than four minutes because they said the body is going to break down. It's physically not impossible. And then, and this was like 1952, he did this. All of a sudden, he ran a mile in three minutes and like 59.8 seconds. It was less than four minutes. And then guess what happened? A couple of months later, somebody else did it. And then more people, and they kept lowering it. They kept breaking the record. All because one guy did it, and he set the example that, hey, it can be done. It can be done. So if you're starting from scratch and you don't think you can be a CPA in the United States, other people have done it. Other people have done it. We have a student in our 13 week course that, that has, she's done it. Okay. I was 17 when I decided to become a CPA. I didn't even know what a CPA did, to be honest with you. My father told me that CPAs run businesses. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to run businesses. And not only that, he told me other business owners go to them for advice. I said, I'm gonna be a CPA then. And then I found out that a CPA is actually an accountant. <laughs> And I had to spend a long time doing things like bank recs and payroll taxes and sales taxes. But now I'm grateful. But the point is, you know, I told you my story. I was 17 when I decided I didn't get my license until I was 27. If you would have told me when I was 17, it's going to take you 10 years and you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to work for a CPA firm. You're going to have to study after you go to work. I might not have done it, to be honest with you. I would have said, that's like, that's impossible. But what I did was I didn't look at all the stuff I had to do. I did one thing at a time. The first thing was getting into a college. Okay. I wasn't, you know, it wasn't like I was going to be 17 and next month I was going to be studying for the CPA exam. Everyone starts from scratch. Okay. So if you're starting from scratch, what's the first thing that you got to do? Okay. Assess your skills and experience. You got to say, okay, what am I working with? Now I got a bunch of handouts and I'm going to, and this is one of the benefits of being in a live class. Okay. I'm going to share with you a whole bunch of tools that you're going to be able to walk away with and, and do your own self assessment. And I'm going to explain what each one is. So the first one is, and this is from Larry. This is life goal setting. Give me one second. I thought I downloaded it. Oh, okay.
Okay, so this is it in the in the chat. And what I think I'll do is I'll just share what's uh, what I'm giving you. Okay, so everyone can everyone see the uh, life life goal setting action guide? Shake your head, Marianne, help me out here. Can you say it? Yes, Joe. Okay. All right. So, you know, Larry's, mm -hmm. I, I like Larry's uh, worksheets because he actually creates these himself. He gave me permission. He gives you an example. So this is something like you, you take this and you see, you can actually fill fill in the blanks. Okay, so that that's the first uh, thing. Why is that happening? Okay. Let me stop the share. Okay. So, okay, here's the next thing. Uh, this is something that I just got from one of the AIs. Uh, it's so I, I've been using a lot of AI tools and and they're really it's it's actually pretty scary but this is you know just another uh work you know a, a worksheet that you could look at to give you an idea how how you can do your own self assessment self assessment Okay, so that's in there. Okay, now I'm gonna give you the chapter that we're gonna be going on from, uh, what do you call it? From the Jumpstart course. Yeah, how to start. Yeah, hold on, I gotta download this. Okay, so there's that one. And the last one I have is something that he just shared with us uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's called the, the first thing. Find that. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. That's the same thing. All right. So you got, you have a couple of uh, items that I gave you that you can walk away with and do your own uh, personal assessment. Okay. Also, in, and I'll tell you that what I found extremely, extremely val valuable is the Clifton Strengths Finder. And you could go to, uh, you can just do a, I, I think in the uh, handout I gave you, it says chapter six, uh, self-assessment, there should be a link. 
uh, to the Clifton Strengths Finder and the Colby. Uh, so the so the Clifton I can understand. Okay, it basically so for free, it's a self assessment tool. You're just gonna you know it's like rapid fire. You're gonna answer a bunch of questions, and I don't know how they do this, but they come up with your personality, your your biggest strengths. Okay. Whenever, when you, when we do anything in life, you want to do it from your strengths. Okay. That was one of the mistakes that I made when I started getting coached. What I used to do is find out what I'm not good at and try to get better at it. <laughs> That's not the solution. That's why if you want to start an agency, what you do is you find out what your strengths are. And you and and also when you're doing that, you're finding out what you're not good at. And then when you start hiring people, you you hire people that are good at the things that you're not good at. Does that make sense, Marianne? That's how you build a team. That was one of the things that made a difference when I hired Larry. Uh, you know, so it, my story is, so I've been an accountant for a long time, for 20 years, two decades. I tried to, do, tried to scale my business. Never had a problem getting clients, okay? I always made a good amount of money, but I couldn't get to the point where I am now, okay? One of the key things was hiring a coach, okay? Now, you don't have to, you know, it's not free, okay? Larry's not free. I'm lucky to even uh, have him. I only have him as a coach because he's a friend. I knew him, okay? So he agreed to coach me and he sees what, we do, what we're doing and he, he believes that uh, we're, we're doing good work here. We're doing good work, but you could get a mentor. Okay. Like Marianne, like me. Okay. Anybody that you can just talk to. So if you're a student of mine, I've offered this so many times. I said, just book a call with me. Okay. Let me mentor you. I know Marianne does her, her elite program and she's always, she's talking about her people as her mentees. Okay. Getting a coach without Larry, and Larry wasn't my first coach. I've had other coaches. Without any of them, I wouldn't have been able to put the pieces together. Okay. When, when somebody uh, can see from the outside what you're trying to do, that's why sports players have coaches. That's why actors have coaches. You would think, oh, they're the best actor in the world. You think Marlon Brando didn't have an acting coach? The best baseball player in the world, let's let's say Derek Jeter, Hall of Fame, one of the greatest players that ever played. He had coaches. He went into slumps, and then he would have somebody look, hey, what, what's wrong with my swing? Accounting is no, is isn't any different. It's just a different sport. It's just a different industry. We all need coaches, okay? Only if you want to be successful, okay? If you want to stay where you are, then just, you know, there's a saying. If you want to stay where you are, do the same thing. If you want to move ahead, you got to do something different. Okay, so a lot of people uh present to me a cv and i i never understood that i said why are you giving me a cv i want a resume okay and what's the difference a resume is one page it tells me exactly what what i need i i when i was you know hiring people before we had our well we still hire people but you know now we get our accountants from from our student Paul but when I was looking at the at 
I'm asking for a resume and I'm getting three page life histories. Okay. If you're, if you're hiring somebody, you don't want to look at three pages. You don't want somebody's life story. You want the condensed version. Okay. A good example is you can go on Marianne's LinkedIn profile. All right. And we just, we did like five interviews. It started out as just, Hey, let's, let's talk about how, you know, how you do an interview. Okay. It wound up being a whole series and, and I put it on my YouTube channel. And, and what I realized was I, when I was looking at her LinkedIn profile, I said, this is what should be on a resume. So if you want to see what should be on a resume, just find, go and look at Marianne's uh, LinkedIn profile. You got to learn. We never stop learning. But if you're starting from scratch, okay, and that's what we're talking about here. You're starting from scratch, okay? You could be somebody like Eileen, and I, I'm sorry if I pick on you all the time, Eileen, but, you know, Eileen was a full-time accounting member in Bedrock, and then I found that when we, so we did the Clifton Strengths Finder for everybody, right? And I thought it was interesting. So I'm, I'm lining everybody's strengths up on an Excel spreadsheet. And you could see like all the accountants have very similar strengths. Mine wasn't. I'm like, I knew it. I'm not really an accountant. I don't have the same strengths as Catherine and Jasmine and Luz. Okay. I'm, you know, like futuristic. Uh, I, I don't even remember what they were, but I said, oh my God, I knew I wasn't an accountant. When I looked at Eileen's, she wasn't an accountant either. She didn't have the, I was like, what are you doing in the accounting team? It turned out Eileen worked in a bank. She wasn't an accountant. <laughs> She took the bedrock course because she wanted to, and tell me if I'm, I'm wrong, Eileen, but I'm pretty sure she took my course because she, she wanted to work from home. So she took the course. She learned how to do U.S. taxes. She was fine in the accounting department, but when I, when I saw what her strengths were, I said, you know, we've been looking for somebody to run the classes. We can't find anybody. It's like you have the skills, your strengths are what we need to help run the classes. And ever since she took over, it's it's been completely different. We had a problem because not a lot of the students weren't finishing. They would pay for the course, they would go through it, but you have to finish the project. You got so she does a lot of work with the students because one of her strengths was she was like an encourager, a coach. And that's what people need. They need to be coached. They need to be encouraged. So if you're starting from scratch, there are unlimited. And when I say unlimited, they, you can't even put a number on it because every day there's more courses. Just in the Philippine community, you don't only have, you know, bedrock. To, we, I just do U.S. taxes. You got Sherry Pineda teaching uh, bookkeeping. I think Marianne teaches bookkeeping. You got people teaching Australian taxes. You got Canadian taxes. Uh, that's just in the Philippine community. Okay. And the thing is, you don't even have to go anywhere. And a lot of times you don't even have to pay anything. So I actually got the top 10 courses for a freelance accountant. So if you want to, I'm going to leave this up here for a second. If you want to take a picture of this, okay. 
because like right now, so I'm meeting with a lot of students and they ask me like, what's the next step? What's the next thing I could learn? And really it depends on what you wanna do. It depends on what you wanna do. And, and really, you know, I should have had a slide in here for that. Because before you do anything in, in business with your career, there's a saying that this guy, Stephen Covey, Dr. Stephen Covey wrote a book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Bestseller, it's like one of these personal development books that if you really, you know, want to sharpen your sword, uh, you read a book like that. Okay, one of the habits is you begin with the end in mind. Okay. What do you want to achieve? Okay. Why did I want to be become an accountant? Because my father told me I would run businesses. That was my path. I said, if being a CPA means I'll run a business, then that's what I'm going to do. The truth is, I knew kid, I knew people from my from my neighborhood that didn't even graduate high school that were running businesses. That's what my father was afraid of. He saw the, the kids that were in my neighborhood and a lot of them didn't even graduate high school. So if I knew, oh, I don't even have to graduate high school and I could run a business, who knows what would have happened? But once I, you know, I had, I had the gall. I had the gall and that's what you need, okay? So you might say, you know what? I just want to work from home. I just want to be with my family. And that's fine. That's fine. As long as you know what your goal is. But then once you're working from home and you could see, hey, I can get a client, then you get two clients. Then you might say, you know what? Maybe I want to start an agency. Because your goals could change. Your goals could change. I have another thing I want to share with you. It's called, uh, let me make sure that I have it. Uh, it's called the Definite Chief Aim Worksheet. And this helped me. This came from uh, Napoleon Hill. Let me make sure I have it. Jumpstart. No, I don't have it. If somebody could remind me before the end of the uh, webinar, I'll give it to you because it it really helped me uh, define, not only define what I wanted to do, but how I was going to do it. And I did mine. I actually still have it. I think it was uh, 2014, I think I wrote it out. And believe it or not, what I'm doing right now is exactly, it's exactly what I wrote in my definite chief aim. What am I doing? I'm talking about this stuff. I'm writing about it. I never did. I said, for me to do what I'm doing right now, I'm going to have to talk about business principles. I'm going to have to talk about success. I'm going to have to teach people. I'm going to have to do public speaking. I'm going to have to write books about it. And lo and behold, here I am. I'm in the fill. And, oh, and part of the result was I'm going to be able to work where I, wherever I want, whenever I want, with whoever I want, whenever I want. And look at where I am. I'm living in the Philippines teaching this stuff. This is what I wanted to do 10 years ago, and I did it. I mapped it out with a definite chief aim. And it came from Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. Okay, so if you want to, that's one of my recommended books. I have three recommended books. Okay, Think and Grow Rich, The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles and... Uh, how to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. 
if you only read three books in your life, read those three. The Bible wouldn't help, wouldn't hurt either. So you might you might want to read four books. All right. So I just had a, a chat with the student, and she told me what she wanted to do. She took the the five week tax course, and she uh, she's actually working for an accounting firm. Okay, she's doing bookkeeping. So now she she took the tax course. She did 13 practice uh, tests. She did really well. And the next step, I said, well, now if they know that you're doing taxes, they should have you that you now that they know that you've learned how to do taxes, they should have you doing taxes instead of just bookkeeping. Uh, so she said, well, what's the next course I should take? And I said, I would recommend taking the payroll tax course and then the sales tax course. Because if you're going to be in the U.S. tax industry, those are the most uh, pressing needs right now. There's always problems with sales tax. Payroll is a big headache and all the payroll companies are very expensive. And income taxes, like I said, there's just not enough accountants to do income taxes. Now, if you're starting from scratch, because I've gotten this question, if I don't even know bookkeeping, can I still do taxes? And the answer is absolutely. Absolutely. Enrolled agents don't know bookkeeping. They don't necessarily know accounting. They know how to prepare taxes. I, I recommend that you know bookkeeping and accounting. And bookkeeping and accounting are two different animals. But if you're starting out and you don't even know bookkeeping, you could learn it. My mother learned it when she was 62. There's all kinds of courses. You can connect with uh, Coach Yan Yan, okay, or Sherry Pineda, or just, you know, uh, and I can't stand QuickBooks. I'm not going to become zero certified, okay? That, that's, my, that's my advice. Sign up with zero. I don't think it costs anything to become zero certified. Uh, so this is the first five. Here's the, the next five. Notice they have communication skills down there. Okay, one of the first topics that, that we talked about in Jumpstart was uh, communication. Anything in business, if you can't communicate, you could be the smartest person in the world, the best accountant in the world, and you're not going to go very far. That's why I recommend that, How to Win Friends and Influence People. That book was recommended to me by my first mentor. The guy was a CPA. He was my third cousin, my cousin Vinny, okay? He gave me that book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Marketing and business development, okay? If you're an accountant, why would marketing and business development be important? To be honest with you, first of all, if you're going to build an agency, you're going to have to do marketing and business development. But I use it as a tool to, to advise my clients, believe it or not. You know, you need two things to, to have a business, to have a viable business. You need sales and you need cash flow. If you don't have sales, forget about cash flow. So really, if you don't have one thing, you don't have a business. If you don't have sales, you, you everything else is a moot point. And believe it or not, I've had plenty of clients that just had expenses. They just because they they woke up one day, they had a, the greatest idea ever, and it turns out it wasn't a great idea because they couldn't do the first thing. They couldn't get anybody to buy their product or service. 
Okay. So if you're going to start an agency, okay, you need to know marketing and business development. Okay. Business law, you know, we cover, believe it or not, we cover a lot of law in our courses. We don't call it business law, but if you, you know, just setting up an entity, we're talking about business law, nexus, where are you supposed to be registered? Okay. If you took a course in any of these, it's not going to hurt you. Okay. It's not going to hurt you in your business, in your business career. If you take a course in graphic design, I don't know how that's going to help you. <laughs> if, uh, yeah, you, what you want to do is you want to hire somebody like Janine to, to do your graphic design. So I don't recommend taking a course in Canva. I would take a course in zero, okay? Don't take courses in QuickBooks. I hate QuickBooks. But zero is so much better than QuickBooks. Zero is actually an accounting program. QuickBooks, believe it or not, was created by two marketing geniuses. They knew how to market QuickBooks. And guess what? When you're in QuickBooks, all you get are pop-ups. Oh, you could buy office supplies. You can order checks from us. You can get incorporated through us. Okay. Why? It's not a coincidence because the guys that started QuickBooks were marketing geniuses. Okay. You want to develop a marketing strategy. Now, this, this includes if you're starting from scratch. And like I said, everything happens in little steps. Nothing happens all at once. Okay? Any building that was built, they built the foundation first, right? If you're going to go in, into this business, if you're starting from scratch, your marketing strategies is yourself. How am I going to sell myself? Okay. One of the things that, that I teach my students is you got to learn how to put your video on. You got to learn how, you know, Luz and I interviewed somebody the other night. Okay, she was a, uh, a marketing person. She did websites. She knew this new program that, that we use in Go High Level. And uh, two things, two things happened that Luz and I both agreed. We couldn't hear her. We couldn't hear her because there was something wrong with her mic. And her background was she lives in a, in a sloppy apartment, okay? Now, I don't care if at least, you know, have a bookshelf, have some, I'm gonna, it was just a terrible appearance. So those two things, basically, uh, she had, she was talented, she had a good, uh, portfolio so it wasn't that she couldn't do the job but i'm 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 saying to myself how am i ever going to have a meeting with her i, I had to keep asking her to re repeat herself so think about that look at you know there's a lot of people here i see we're up to over 50 people look at people's uh backgrounds okay i'm looking at mario and Agnes, okay, and Avor, am I saying that right? Okay, the, yous all look good, okay? You got a good background, you're centered, That that's important, because believe it or not, uh, we, we do everything on, on video now, 
We do, and if you're not comfortable on video, you're not going to be working remotely. That's a fact. Nobody's going to hire you if if you have your video camera off. So that that goes with communication and, and presenting yourself. Now, if you're going to take it another step, like I know, like Mario ha already has an agency. Now you got to come up with a marketing plan, a strategy. And we're working on that. And that has to do with creating your client avatar, what kind of services you want to offer. But this is about starting from scratch, right? What you want to do is what Mary Ann's done. Build your network. Okay. I hear this all the time. Your net worth is your network. It's not what you know, it's who you know. That's why I tell my students, if you want to get a remote job with an accounting firm, yeah, you could go to the help wanted, right? You can go to onlinejobs.ph. You can go to LinkedIn and see who's hiring. But guess what? You're competing with everyone else. You're competing with everyone else that's looking for that job. What if you did it a little differently? What if you decided, you know what? This is the kind of firm I want to work for. I want to work for a firm like Bedrock, where, where you know, everybody there seems like they're happy. You know, Joe teaches people. They got all these nice people. They got Luz. They got Agnes. They got Grace. Uh, that would be a nice company to work for. Okay. Uh, one way you can do that is connect with me on LinkedIn. Think about it. Just connect with me on LinkedIn. Make a connection. If you want to find out how to do that, and I keep saying, you know, go to Marion, join her elite thing, because she's the master at LinkedIn. But the accounting firms are on LinkedIn. And let me tell you something. They're always looking for people. They're, all, they're not always going to advertise. Okay, listen to me. They're not always going to be advertising. Because when they put an ad in, they're going to get 200 resumes. But accounting firms are always looking for talent. And here it is. I'm like, I wish there was a LinkedIn when I started. I had to physically drive to meet accountants and go on an interview. Oh, my God. You have, like, an unlimited supply of prospects. But you don't just go to them and say, hey, I'm looking for a job. Are you hiring? There's a process. Okay, what you want to do is you want to make the connection, let them know, hey, I, how about this? I'm a CPA candidate. You know how many heads will turn when you got that, when you have that on your LinkedIn profile? CPA candidate. Most CPAs in the United States don't even know that a foreigner could be a CPA. They don't even know it. It's not like, you know, they just don't know. <laughs> the accounting world is like, they're like in a bubble. What they worry about is what's the next tax law. They're worried about what's the, you know, tax law. Accountants, believe it or not, are some of the worst business people I've ever met in my life. I know this because I worked with them. <laughs> they don't practice fundamental business principles. They might know how to do somebody's accounting and taxes, but even when it comes to hiring people, they have no idea what they're doing. So you getting a position is, 
and, and this is this is my advice. You think outside the box and you decide, you decide what kind of position do I want and what kind of firm and person do I want to work with? I wanted to work with a small firm. I didn't like the big company atmosphere. I didn't understand it. I wanted people that I was going to work hand in hand with. Okay. And either way is fine, whatever your, your objectives are. Establish your brand. Okay. Believe it or not, you're a brand. What do you stand for? What do you stand for? When somebody looks up your your LinkedIn profile, who are they going to say? If it was me, I wouldn't put QuickBooks specialist. <laughs> okay. It, it, there's so many QuickBooks specialists that it's almost like, okay, you might as well put on that you wear clothes too. You want to stand out. CPA candidate. U.S. tax course graduate. Don't look at what everybody else is doing because then you're not going to stand out. I never had a problem getting clients because I don't really talk like a regular account. I talk to people from the heart. That's my brand. I am what I am. Okay. Just be who you are and try to stand out. That's my advice. Don't just be like everyone else. Set your pricing. Set your price. Know beforehand. Hey, this is what, what I want. Now, if you're just starting from scratch, okay, don't be one of the people who say, oh, I have no experience. I'm not worth anything. This is what I tell mothers. I said, if, if you have raised a child, you got more experience than anyone. If you know how to raise a child, you're going to know how to deal with American entrepreneurs because they're like three-year-olds. They don't know what they want. They don't know what they need. They're going to throw temper tantrums, Right, Agnes? You deal with them. You're dealing with them. Am I right? They don't know. You know, when it comes to accounting and taxes... How would they know? That's why, you know, I tell my students, I'm like, don't let the client dictate the accounting system. You create the accounting system. You don't let them say, oh, I'll get you the bank statements when I get, get them to you. Because they don't know how much work we have to do. So... Set in your mind, hey, this is the position I want, and this is how much I'm worth. So the the woman with the uh, that isn't going to get the job on her profile, on her Upwork profile, she said that she was asking for five dollars an hour. Okay, in the interview, I asked her, how much are you asking? Knowing that it said $5 an hour. And she said, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to start at $8 an hour. I said, that's interesting because your profile says you'll start at $5 an hour. And then she sent me an email after she said, oh, I'm willing to start at $5 an hour. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. I mean, I knew what I was willing to start her at, 
and it wasn't what she was asking for, but that that's fine. You know, so here's what I'm saying, folks. If you go on vacation, right? I'm hoping that everyone here has gone on a vacation. You don't just hop in your car and start driving. You don't just go to the airport and buy a plane ticket anywhere. You put some thought into it, right? You say, hey, I want to go to Cebu, okay? That's where everybody's telling me I should go. You should go to Cebu. So I'm going to plan, okay, when am I going to go there? How much is it going to cost? Do it, what, what place am I going to stay? I'm going to put a lot of thought into it. It kills me when people go into their careers and start a business, they put less thought into it than they, than they put into their own vacations. Okay? So do everything with intention. When you do it with intention, you know, when I did that definite chief aim, it was clear. It was clear. This is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to do it. And this is what the result is going to be. And then it was just a lot of little steps. Thousands, thousands of little steps. I'm a, I'm a best-selling author today. Okay, you can go on Amazon. I have a bunch of books up there. Okay, I'm proud of it. You know how long it took me to write my first book? It took like two years. Two years, one paragraph at a time. But I knew in my definite chief aim, I said, if I want the result that I'm, that I'm experiencing right now, I have to write about this. There's no way around it. How are people, how are people going to know what I'm, what I'm about? It was simple, but it wasn't easy. Okay. Now I write books all the time. It became easy. It actually became easy. I'm like, now I know how to do it. You get the idea, then you start with what chapters. Then you do a little paragraph at a time. And, and before you know it, you have a book. All right, so that's the, that's not the end, that's the beginning. Okay, if you're starting from scratch, we, we all started from scratch. Steve Jobs started from scratch. He started Apple Computer in his parents' garage. Think about that. I'm not saying you got to be like Steve Jobs, but if you're starting in your parents' garage, that's fine. That's fine. If anybody would like to chat with me, all you got to do is go to Time with Joe. Uh, you don't have to pay the $75. Just go clients and students, and, and I'll chat with you. I'm here to help empower you. That, that's my mission. My mission is to empower people financially. That's, that's what I could do because of my experience, my, my knowledge, what I know about uh, starting a business, okay? And I know that the more people I help, the closer I get to my vision, okay? So, if you want to chat about becoming a CPA, about becoming an, an, uh, just working remotely, if you want some guidance, I'm here for you. Okay. That, and, and to be honest with you, uh, a lot of people think that, uh, you know, a guy like Larry Broughton, right? When they think, oh, it's, this guy is, uh, he's, he writes books, he's teaching students, he's running a, a, an accounting firm. Uh, 
He must be busy all the time. The truth is I'm lonely. I, I usually sit here playing uh, pool on, on my cell phone. People don't, don't realize it. I'm not sitting here working all the time, waiting for people to, to book a chat with me. So do me a favor. If, if you want to chat, I know uh, Larry, Larry, Daw Am I, I know Larry is here. I have a, a meeting schedule with you, I think, tomorrow. Uh, I've spoken to a lot of you that are, that are here already. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking to just, you know, give people some guidance, however I could help you. All right, that's my story. I'm sticking with it. Thank you, Janine. Is there... Oh, I forgot. If anybody has any questions, uh, I know this wasn't like a mind bending, like one of my tax uh, classes where people's brains hurt. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll, I'll stick around. Uh, do we have any announcements? Janine, Marianne, we, we do have the... Uh, the CPA workshop, which we're doing, that's probably going to be in mid uh, mid September. I see Sapner is here. Would you like to say anything, Sapner? This is a living, breathing uh, CPA, one of our students. Marianne, do you have any announcements? Hi, Joe. <clears throat> Can I ask? Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, regarding the U.S. review, whatever is that assistance, can you elaborate more of the details? Since I was asked to promote the the course itself. Okay, wait. Who's who's asking this? Rosie. Rosie. So what what's the question? I received an email um offering for an affiliate marketing to promote the. CPA review. I don't know if it's a full length. Uh, I could say it's an it's just an overview. Or can you discuss uh, the full details? I mean here about the the CPA review. Yeah. Yeah, I could. So let me show you what we have so far. About that. Okay. So I I'm gonna share. I'm gonna share. I'm gonna share my outline. Uh, so you, you could see where we are. So this is jumpstart your CPA career. This is what you're talking about, right? Yeah. I just want to make a clear statement. Is it a guide? Because here in the Philippines, there are more, um, registered review centers who can offer the course. Uh, I haven't re uh, replied to your email. Kasi. No, so, no, it's not a review class. She's an over of the u.s taxation and how to and no how we're not we're not this is not going to be a review class sapna took a review class and i'm going to show you exactly what review course uh she took uh this is going to be a how-to webinar in other yeah. words so you know you can sign up for a review class and they'll tell you everything I'm going to tell you. The difference is I'm going to tell you in a, in a clear, concise, these are the steps that you have to take. For instance, if you want to, so you're a CPA, right? SAP is a CPA. She can't file tax returns. You got to do something else to be able to file tax returns. You got to, and I'll show you how to become a U.S. tax preparer. You got to get a P-10 and an E-FIN. They don't cover that in a, in a CPA review class, but I'm going to cover that in this webinar. Okay. Uh so you got to go through an evaluation service and this is, you could go through one of the, uh, what do you call it? 
one of the companies like Sapna did, and, and this is who she went through, Miles Education. Now, can everybody see this? Can you, okay. So Miles Education, okay. They, this is, and this is what I started to say before, but I lost my train of thought. Uh, they'll show you, just like they showed Sapna, how to, how to study for and pass the CPA exam. And what they're saying is that within 20 months, you can become a CPA. Uh, after, look at this. What they're saying is you get a, a CPA certificate, you got a possibility of getting a job at one of the biggest accounting firms in the world, starting at $60,000 a year. Okay. This is what they said. There's a huge shortage of accounts in the U.S. I've known this for a long time, but now what, what I see is this is being blasted all over the, the internet. The Wall Street Journal, the Washington, but these are big, big uh, firms, okay? So this is a tremendous opportunity, okay? This is from the uh, NASBA. This is like the governing body of how you get uh, certified. Okay, where is it? So we're gonna go through all of these different steps. Okay. Uh, there's other uh, things. You know, I'm all I'm trying to do is is spread the word. Okay, this is a free webinar. I don't have a course to sell. I'm not an affiliate with any anybody. Okay, I want people to know. Hey, you could become a CPA. There's so there's a lot of. So I've already spent a lot of time researching this, okay? We have Sapner who's actually gone through it, okay? So you could know this, you can go through this. I'm trying to save you a lot of time because I get, I actually get a lot of students asking me, uh, they call me and they say, hey, my client wants me to file his tax return. How do I do it? Well, the truth is they can't. You have to have a PTIN and an EFIN, and nobody really knows how to do it. Because up until last year, you couldn't be a foreigner and, and have an EFIN. You had to have a social security number. Well, they came up with something called a foreign EFIN. Okay. To get a foreign EFIN, you got to be associated with somebody that already has an EFIN like me. So it's like you have to go, you can go under my umbrella. So what I what I tell all of my students is if you want me to, to uh, vouch for you, I'll sign off as because then it becomes my responsibility. So if you mess up your EFIN because you did something that you shouldn't have done, they're going to come to me and say, hey, you're responsible for this person's EFIN. We're suspending their EFIN. The chances on that happening are slim because the software isn't going to let you file something that shouldn't be filed. Okay. But the point is, there's all these hoops you got to jump through. The purpose of the webinar is to give you the clear path. This is what you're going to have to do. Okay. So just like Sapna became, she's got a CPA license, but she can't actually file returns. That uh, just because you, you have a CPA license doesn't mean that you're qualified to, to file a U.S. tax return. Okay. Plus, you don't have to be a CPA to file U.S. tax returns. So in this workshop, this webinar, I'm going to tell you, if you want to be a tax preparer, this is how you do it. Okay. You can also, you could still become an enrolled agent. Okay. We have all that information. So I'm going to cover that in the webinar.
Okay, does that make sense? Did I answer your question? Okay, cleared. I will just get the other details with Jamie. Okay. Okay, so copy. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay, so Vanessa, so Janine, how do they find out about the uh, the next courses? I think you can go to uh, jumpstartph.com. Is that is that where we have it? Uh, no, Joe, it's in the Bedrock website. Yeah, I will just send the link, Joe. Okay, okay. Okay, there's, Irene said there are four disciplines. Yeah, there's four different parts. I don't even remember what the parts are. I think there's uh, practice, there's auditing, there's taxes. I think the practice part might be two parts. Uh, Sapner, are you here? Yeah, Larry, you're right. There is a shortage in the Philippines as well. <laughs> and the reason is the, the people in the Philippines don't want to pay accountants. They don't pay you anything. So all the good accountants here are going somewhere else. They're, they're all moving to either the United States, Australia. So yeah, it was a, there's a shortage of accountants everywhere, everywhere. That's why if I was a, a high school kid and I was going to, now it's, it's like when I was going to school, you want to get that accounting degree now. All right. So uh, Janine put a, a link in the, in the chat for, for our courses. Does anybody have any other questions, comments? Like I said, you know, if, if you do, you can always reach out to me. Just go to Time with Joe. Uh, if there's nothing on my calendar, just email me. And, and you can just, it's joe at bedrockbusinessbuilders.com. Okay. I think what we do is we block out a lot of my time so that I could take naps during the day. So if, if you want to meet with me, uh, I can, I can not take my nap. Okay. The other thing, so we do have, uh, we have a, a sales tax, a free sales tax overview course that we're doing. Uh, Janine, do you know when we're doing that? You would think that I would know this stuff. But we're going to do uh, now sales tax in the United States is big. It's big because there's hundreds of billions of dollars that all the different states haven't been collecting. They haven't been collecting it because of this nexus rule. And, and the nexus rule has changed. It used to be you needed to have a physical presence in a state to be required to charge somebody sales tax. That's gone. That's gone because of the internet. Now it's an economic uh, nexus. So in the course, in, in the uh, and this is a free overview, I'm going to give you every state's nexus roles. Okay, this is important. Okay, why is it important? Because there's going to be a lot of people, a lot of businesses in the United States that are supposed to be collecting sales taxes and aren't. And what does that mean? That means if they're not collecting sales taxes, the government can come in and make them. So sales tax, it's not like here. Sales tax is something that the business owner has to collect. They have to collect it and then pay it over to the government. If they're supposed to be collecting it and they're not, they're personally liable. So think about it. You got millions of businesses out there that don't know what the rules are. The rules just changed and they're supposed to be collecting sales tax. So we're out there, we're the accountants, we're, it's our job to say, listen, you're supposed to be charging your client sales tax. 
and then let them decide if they want to collect it or not. Construction contractors are notorious for this. They don't want to charge it. I tell them you, you're supposed to charge it. If you don't want to charge it, then you're going to pay it. If they knock on your door, you're going to pay the sales tax. All right, so the, there's a lot going on. All right, are we good, people? Are we okay? Can I go watch Netflix? Eileen, do you want to take a picture? Is Eileen here? Where's our Where's our photographer? Uh, Joe, Eileen is not here. Oh, okay. All right. We don't need to take the picture. It's a Philippine thing. Anyway. All right, everybody. God bless. Thank you. I hope to hear from you and see you uh, at one of our courses. Like I said, reach out to me. Timewithjoe.com. I can't make it any easier. And for the for the bedrock team, you're supposed to be working, Grace. You're supposed to be doing accounting work. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone.